160. He's gone. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the garage. Uh, in the last episode, you saw me pull this motor out of the ATV, and now you can see it's it's up here. And this is how every custom engine build, uh, engine swap I've ever done starts out. Um, and there's various degrees of difficulty, right? You know, swapping an M50 into an E30 is something that's been documented a kajillion times over. However, from my brief Google foo, I could not find anybody who had this specific motor in this specific golf cart or in a golf cart period. We're kind of starting from the bottom. And the first thing you do is you get your engine, you get it up on a hoist, and you try to put it where you want it to go. And so that's what we did. We tried, took this engine and we tried to put it where we want it to go. And unfortunately, it looks like this cross member right here is sitting exactly where uh, I need my engine to go. And as you can see, this cross member provides uh, a lot of structural integrity for the outside of the frame. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut it out and we're going to leave these welds intact. And we're just going to basically cut right down here and remove this metal section. The next thing that kind of comes up for debate is we got to find a way to mount the engine in the spot. And traditionally, you know, I would weld together an engine and create a lot of steel. However, this frame is all aluminum, and so I came across a really good deal today, so I bought a bunch of uh, quarter, uh, yeah, quarter inch thick, uh, about two inch wide uh, aluminum bar stock, similar to this, to this kind of stuff right here that this is made out of. And we're going to look at it and see if, uh, if it makes sense to craft an engine cradle out of it. If it does, it'll allow me to weld the engine cradle into the frame, which would be cool. The flip side of that is we uh, build some sort of steel structure on here that, that bolts on, and then we build a steel engine cradle out of like one inch uh, DOM tubing or something like that, um, and then uh, have it basically weld in like that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bust out the plasma cutter, and we're going to take that piece of aluminum out, and then we're going to try to stuff this engine in there and see what it looks like. Well, we seem to have run into our first uh, major issue, and let me bring you around here to the back. You can see there's the rear sprocket of the motor, and the motor is basically all the way over to the right that it can go, and that is where the shaft is. Somehow, we're either going to have to move the motor so that it is, you know, almost com you know, completely off center, uh, shifted over here, which would involve cutting in and refabbing this frame rail, which, if we're being honest here, may or may not be above kind of uh, gill set, if you will, because remember, that's your main frame rail, that's what's holding your whole uh, golf cart together, and, and in the name of safety, that might be a little a little more than, than I really kind of am equipped to handle. The other thing is, is we could try to get a different axle back here, the issue with getting a different axle is that I don't really know what different axle to get. Um, obviously this one is designed to spin so the input shaft spins forward, then the wheels spin forward. And so it's got a it's got several, you know, like a gear reduction in there probably and several changes of rotation. So it's not like I can just rip that thing apart. Gonna have to figure it out, I guess. Alright, so I've been working over here on the golf cart. We've been taking the uh, engine in and out and in and out and in and out. And I disconnected one of the brake lines and I've chopped out some more metal here. Trying to understand what it was going to take to make it fit. And it looks like we're going to have to cut this frame rail here and remove this chunk of frame rail. Now there's two primary concerns. The first is that right here is where the front shackle mounts. And so that part's got to be tied into everything and reinforced. Uh, and so it's not just super trivial of just, hey, let's just fucking hack it. Um, so I'm going to try to remove uh, this kind of a brake cable completely and try to cut out as much forward as I can. And now you're going to say, you know, Max, you can't just go and, and start hacking out the frame. Well, yes and no. So obviously we can't just cut out the frame and just leave a hole and be like, oh yeah, it'll be fine. Um, but for those of you who have worked on lower trucks and stuff, there's what's called a Z-notch or a C-notch or a C-channel or whatever the fuck. And it's used for dropping uh, a truck down over the axle. So what they do is they cut the frame and they basically weld up 
uh, a little thing like this so the axle can actually go up into the frame. And what we're going to attempt to do here is something really, really similar. We're going to cut out this piece of uh, aluminum here. So there we go, uh, a lot of hackery, and obviously this is now uh, quite flexible, but um, it, I can't get it to sit in there by myself uh, and hold the camera, but basically at this point, when the engine is pushed all the way over here and set upright, uh, it fits in there nicely, there's space right here for the clutch, and so what we're going to have to figure out is how we're going to plate and brace this right here, and what I think is going to happen is I'm going to use quarter inch steel, bolt it in here, have it kind of run up and over parallel here and then come back down and bolt onto this guy. There's not a ton of material left on both sides to bolt um, and so once we put that piece of quarter inch steel it's going to it's gonna help make everything rigid and we'll put a, uh, a reinforcement kind of brace along the steel as well before we bolt it in. So what we did here is I made a cardboard template on the inside of the frame and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, plasma cut that template out uh, out of this uh, quarter inch steel here. Well the fucking plasma cutter stopped working and can't get it turned back on so I was like god fucking junk and then I was like how did we cut metal before I had the plasma cutter and so kicking it old school today just getting the half angle grinder because I, I mean I just got to make some progress on this fucking project. And so we're just going to go through and, and cut it out with a grinding wheel. I've already burned through, uh, through a whole wheel and I have a few more. And we're just going to get as much stuff cut out today as we can and, and that's just going to have to be it. Sorry guys for not filming as much as I normally do. I'm just not in a great mood today and you know working on projects really kind of helps a lot of that shit. But there we go. Um, obviously the bolts I have, I just, I just, there's a set of bolts I found. They're obviously too short because there's no point in using... Uh, locking nylon washers if you don't have a bolt that's long enough to reach the nylon but they're the right diameter so we'll just leave them in there for now and uh, do that so now we got to get some cardboard cutouts that are gonna fit right here and the reason I pulled the engine out is because it doesn't really matter at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a brace across and then back to make as much space as possible here so uh, get my cardboard back out make some cutouts and then transfer it over to the uh, quarter inch plate so here's the two uh, end pieces we need. This one's basically just straight lines. This one has a little bit of a notch to it to get maximized surface area in there. And we gotta try to fit two bolts plus a welded plate onto each of these. So it should be a little, a little tricky. So here are our two little custom pieces and they fit in there pretty nicely. As you can see, I've marked off uh, two holes to drill. The holes are kind of arbitrary. They're basically the best place to put it. And what we're gonna do is once this is bolted in, uh, like this one for instance, bolts in like that, we're going to use this outside edge and we're going to weld a piece on. That way we can always get access to our bolts, um, you know, kind of no matter what, if we ever need to take this back off. Hopefully it should be designed such a way that this frame is never really removed, but you want to be able to access your bolts uh, rather than just kind of weld yourself into a corner. So here's what it looks like uh, with both of our mounts in place. And so off of there, we're going to weld a structure out that comes out here and comes back. Um, and just gonna make a big loop and then we're gonna reinforce it so it doesn't flex and hopefully this will uh, be strong enough that it won't flex like that. Alright, time to make some more progress. We cut these plates and now we've cut these plates and what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to angle this as flush as we can and there's gonna be that plate right there which is cut for the other side and then I'm gonna put a brace here at the very end of this plate and then I'm going to put another piece uh, underneath it and already we had a fitment issue right here so I had to cut that out real quick because if you look at where this plate has to sit it's got to sit something like that and obviously it's trying to occupy the same space as this flimsy little aluminum bit and so I just cut that out with a reciprocating saw and then knocked it out with a cold chisel but right now what we're going to do is we have the MIG welder over here we're going to try to uh, tack everything in and then get the other piece of this cut. This is all quarter inch plate so once I kind of uh, reinforce it it should be as, just as strong if not stronger than the other side.
So there we go. And now we're going to cut a piece that's going to sit right back here uh, and hopefully fit in there quite nicely. There we go. There's our fully boxed frame. Uh, you can see this fit in here nice and snug. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through and I'm going to weld all of this up. Uh, and then we're going to cut out some gussets and stuff that are going to go in here just to give this extra rigidity, obviously, because we're spacing. There's a lot of, it's almost 12 inches of lever arm on it. Uh, and so we want to make it as structurally rigid as we can uh, to basically ensure that the frame doesn't flex uh, too, too much. Because remember, the engine is also going to be mounted to this structure in here. Of course, we are tying this side into that side through the engine cradle, but still, you want to make sure you do a good job on something like this. There we go, our frame is now gusseted. Uh, we may end up adding more gussets later on if we need to, uh, but for now you can tell it's gotten considerably stronger, uh, which is good. So we can set that aside for now and make our way over here to our engine, which you can see I've hoisted way up in the air. And this tiny little cardboard cutout tab, this one fits over every single mounting hole we're gonna use. So potentially one, one, two, three, four, potentially four. So I'm gonna to try to cut out eight of these units. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them out a quarter inch plate again. Um, but for this, this is exactly where a plasma cutter comes in super handy. Because what you can do is, instead of, you know, having to grind everything out like we've been doing, uh, I can literally just transfer this over and uh, it's gonna fit perfectly into our two inch strips that we made. And so I'm gonna transfer it in get the plasma cutter out here and uh, basically just cut these out real quick. Alright, so next step for the golf cart was to make these little quarter inch uh, steel tabs and these holes I drilled and uh, chamfered uh, are going to be for these engine mounting bolts and so what's going to happen is um, these guys if we come over here just an example this is going to mount here a second one's going to mount on the other side and we're going to bolt them on uh, and then we're going to weld a piece of steel like this backwards back here across the back and uh, that will allow us to build the frame for the cradle uh, in which the engine is going to sit so the next step is to go piece by piece and cut little backing plates for these uh, and then uh, weld them on. So there we go. There's our all of our little arms. And we're going to have to build something out a little further here. But there's a mounting arm. We have one under here and one back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to build kind of a sled out of box tubing that will help protect our engine from underneath as well as provide a structure for us to mount to. And remember, the engine actually sits slightly forward, uh, so it's gonna it's gonna work out pretty good in the frame. Uh, so that's it for this part uh, of the build. Uh, next, we're gonna, like I said, build the engine uh, cradle and figure out how we're gonna mount it in the chassis. <laughs> 